now pay attention to this older diagram from the World Health Organization. It is showing the points around a globe where climate change is raising its ugly head, provoking unusually persistent droughts, disappearing groundwater and resulting famines. Included in this which is brew, ocean acidification, floods from melting glaciers and ocean level rise. Things have gotten much worse since, but hold on to your hat, as quite a few experts are now projecting that by 2050 these areas will have grown to cover this much more of the planet. The southwestern United States farmers and ranchers have no argument with this outcome, something they already feel in their wallet when they cut down orchards they can't maintain anymore, or when Texans slaughter the cattle they can't water. This is catching all over the world some areas much too wet to farm and others bone dry with no end in sight. Kenya already has over 300,000 shepherds from Somaliland in their Dadaab refugee camps. When these farmers buried the last goat from their herd, a pathetic sack of bones, they all said it was time to leave to save the kids. Same story from these hopeful Eritreans leaving for a camp, going camping with a smile on their face. The reason why we cannot see their children, they are sitting on top of that glorious load, circled by adults to keep them from falling off the truck. The real shocker, however, is that by 2050 the world population will have grown from 7 billion to 9 billion. Again the WHO shows us how these 2 billion humans will be distributed. Each of these black icons represents 5 million people, all aged 35 and younger. No need to say more as we can now believe in the case for those 500 million new refugees. They are young and eager to live and protect their children from famine and wars. No border will stop them, and they are mostly heading north where there is peace, water, and food. Are we going to order 500 million more tents? At $500 a piece this represents a quarter of a trillion dollar, and they only last a year or two, and frankly quite useless in the north where most will be going. And how do we feed and keep that swarming population healthy? They obviously have babies and little if any money. Are we going to keep on creating camps that are depressing welfare states offering neither comfort nor hope? So confirming that the first group that tried to, within the first group that tried to cross the, the river, there were about uh, three Afghani refugees who died, four are missing, and they're saying four of them are in hospital right now, recovering after uh, they were saved uh, from drowning. No need to say more as we can now believe in the case for those 500. So confirming that the first group that tried to, within the first group that tried. Or should we develop a new breed of self-reliant camps while trying hard to reverse climate change if is not too late? Project 1, inspired by Mother Nature and swarms of honeybees proposes to do just that. It already has a healthy start as you will see for yourself. When the first Syrian refugees arrived in Jordan, they never dreamed they would be here this long. Five years later, a new generation has been born here. In February, Rima became the 5,000th baby delivered at the UN hospital in Jordan's biggest refugee camp. Most of the refugees here in the Zatari camp are from Dara province, just across the border from Jordan. It's where the uprising began, with protests against the arrest and torture of Syrian teenagers. With this document, our wish is to plant more of the seeds to grow a complete solution to the refugee problem, one of the most baffling of our times. We absolutely need to deal effectively with the growing hordes of refugees across the world. This is not going away any time soon as we will show in the first few pages. There are close to 60 million refugees and internally displaced persons today, a number expected to reach 500 million by 2050. This is according to the more optimistic projections of knowledgeable sources. We expect you to be as shocked as we are, 
a half billion refugees in just 35 years from now. We are the High Tech Corporation, a California non-profit company made up now of a few construction professionals and its support personnel. We are retirees of industrial design, civil engineering, architecture and manufacturing. In the recent years, our mission has been to design shelters resilient to natural disasters. We expressed it with this illustration, hinting that we do address a neglected part of architecture. And just recently we have widened our mandate to include refugee shelters, to be followed by a new breed of self-reliant small towns for refugees. Those can seamlessly reach permanence, and yet later can revert to temporary, even to a vacant lot if needed. Call us crazy, but we think that we know how to make these small towns grow like mushrooms all over the world. We just need to make it happen before the next tsunami wave of refugees. The book starts with a good look at typical refugees of all ages, listing their needs while describing what's on their mind, this at evolving stages of their situation. This will emphasize how today's refugee camps completely fail to address most of these needs and aspirations. That is now so well known that most refugees will prefer to risk everything to avoid a camp managed by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. In the Haiti of 2016, they have officially uninvited. Who wants an open-air jail that doubles up as a bad welfare state with no jobs, bad food, and no comfort, cholera and rape from the troops, no way to sue for damage, enough, they said. Widespread criticism of the UN's continued presence in Haiti. So what's their purpose? Being here, bringing stability. More than 6,000 UN peacekeepers are currently deployed to Haiti to provide security to a country that has often been wracked by violence. And yet, in light of recent scandals such as this latest report, there is a growing chorus of voices in Haiti who say that force may have overstayed its welcome. They have no business here, truly. Never had. And it's been like that for close to 12 years. They should go, pack up, and go. Unfortunately, rape and sexual exploitation are not the end of the story. We continue from the ground in Haiti. Next. Recent testing has indicated with almost certainty that this particular strain of cholera has come from UN relief workers. Just over nine months after a devastating earthquake rocked the Haitian capital in 2010, Health officials announced the country's first outbreak of cholera in more than a hundred years. With poor water sanitation, the deadly disease quickly spread and soon became an epidemic. It killed thousands. Local health officials initially struggled to pinpoint how it started, but international forensic investigators later pointed the finger at a surprising source. David Ariosto recently visited a cholera clinic in Haiti and has this report. Wait, wait, it's, it's rubbing, it's rubbing. In Haiti, cholera is not only claiming lives, it may be getting worse. The deadly waterborne disease has so far left some 9,000 people dead, sickening more than 740,000. And the Haitian government.